welcome back to the studio. We have talked a lot about your AI advantage with Oracle, but enough talking. It's time to show you Oracle AI in action. And we are here with Luke Kowalski. He's the SVP of Corporate Affairs and Compliance. Luke is looking at 25 years to life sentence at Oracle and is mad about F1, including AI in F1. Luke, how are you? I'm doing great. Thank Good. you, Kendall. Thank you, Fritz. Yeah, thanks for coming on. So I'm going to answer your question, I promise. Okay. But I have a small technical support uh, inquiry for you. Okay. So uh, I don't actually have a, an opinion about this, but as we debate about artificial intelligence back and forth over here, uh -huh. are the mics muted or unmuted <laughs> for today? We'll let you know when. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll, okay, okay, we'll okay. keep you posted okay, on that. Okay, so I'm confused about that. However, I'm not confused about Oracle's differentiation when it comes to AI. Yes, yes, let's talk about that. We are going to talk about AI and Red Bull a little bit later when we get into some of these demos, but for, for right now, there's so much hype in the AI and ML field. What are Oracle's three tangible differentiators when it comes sure. to AI? Three is a great number. Everybody loves the number three. Yes. So chief among the differentiators is the fact that we're focused on enterprise uh, AI as opposed to consumer AI. Now, there are plenty of use cases where you might want to, our, our customers might want to, uh, point the, um, you know, the AI at the wisdom of the public internet. <laughs> but some customers maybe are not so excited about that. Yeah. Wisdom they, in air quotes. Yeah. 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 So, so in some cases they say, I want something a little bit more secure and I want better accuracy. Because if I'm referencing the enterprise data behind my firewall, it's gonna answer my questions about you know, my business trajectory or about uh, my forecasts. You know, anything like that is going to be you know, both more accurate and secure. The second differentiation is that our AI spans the entire tech stack. Uh, so we go from compute to the server operating system, and this includes our autonomous Linux, and it has case splice. Yeah. The only uh, situation where it'll sort of patch itself, and you don't need to bring down the server, right? It's really unique. Then we move on to our two databases. There's 23AI, and there's Heatwave MySQL. Not one, but two databases. So lots of choice, and then of course analytics and applications. And applications themselves include NetSuite as well as uh, you know, fusion and industry uh, vertical applications. And all of it is pre-integrated together. No need to hire integrators, no need to worry about anything. All comes with enterprise governance, security, and performance. If we were to zero in on one of those components in the AI tech stack, maybe compute is interesting. So we give our customers choice. If they have a complicated AI workload, sure, we can offer that. Uh, you, you run your workload on you know, Supercluster through our partnership with NVIDIA. Or if, you want, if you're concerned about the economy and price performance, maybe you want to do inferencing work in Gen AI um, on machines and shapes from our friends, actually our cousins from Ampere. These are <laughs> ARM-based servers, right? That's very economical. Price performance is amazing, and you can run inferencing and Gen AI on compute as well. So we essentially give you a choice. And then the third differentiation is choice and flexibility. Uh, Oracle has always been about open standards and interoperability. So you heard Mr. Ellison talk about you know the new multi-cloud open AI platform. It's all about that. We now have interoperability between Oracle OCI. Google, Microsoft, every hyperscaler out there, and it's possible through open standards, and also uh, what's really compelling is being able to run the Oracle applications in their infrastructure. You get better performance and better, uh, better security uh, that way. And then last, uh, in terms of LLMs, you could run with large ones or small ones. Sometimes the smaller ones are more interesting, particularly if you're focused on maybe a moonshot, right? and you want that uh, LLM inside your database, you want it private, or maybe with some research institutions, and you want to custom, uh, uh, you know, configure it and tailor it uh, to the particular workload. So those are kind of the three differentiators that, that we have out there. I think they're very compelling. Agreed. Well, can we see um, some examples of real business utility, some AI in action? Absolutely. Uh, 
nothing better than to actually show it working. Yeah. Right. There are too many people talking about it <laughs> and not doing it. So the first example involves uh, heat wave um, AI. And let's go ahead and, uh, and run the video. And what we're doing over here is that we're asking it a question. And the question is who won the Formula One championship in 2023? And we're asking which team? And it's not giving us a, a terribly interesting answer. Uh, however, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna load some enterprise documents which are behind our firewall in our enterprise data store and we're gonna load them into our vector uh, data store, into our lake hubs. And as you can see over here, it supports multiple data formats, PDF, doc, uh, whatever, whatever you'd like. And then once you select the documents that are topical to the things that you want to analyze and you want to run AI on, right, you can go ahead and import it. And by the way, even if you search the internet for this question, it'll first give you 20 advertisements and then it'll, <laughs> it'll tell you, oh, it's Max Verstappen. It's like, no, I was asking which team, not which driver. <laughs> Come on, wake up. So, so now what we're gonna do is that these documents are getting ingested and they're getting parsed. So the computer is getting smarter, literally, as we watch. It's super cool. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna run the question again. I think it's gonna do a better job. Yeah. Okay? And, okay, we're asking the same question and here it goes. It's going to give us a very succinct answer, and it's going to say, yeah, Red Bull, of course. <laughs> and Oracle Red Bull. <laughs> yes, yes, because, of course, first we're going to ask, what role did artificial intelligence and machine learning play? And it's going to have access to the documents and the press releases and, and all of your internal sales players and briefings and, and things like that. So, so it's going to say, okay, here's a quote from Christian Horner. It's definitive. It is exact versus what somebody maybe said or maybe didn't say, right. you know, somewhere out there. Who knows? Fake news, whatever. So, and, and of course, we're, we're also going to ask it about Oracle Cloud. And in the case of Oracle Cloud, we've got 400 gigabytes of data that is gathered, you know, in each race. Wow. I was with those guys, you know, at Silverstone. It's amazing to see the power of, you know, analytics. Yes. And, 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 and another thing that's also amazing is that you're able to maintain context. We take it for granted that humans do that. You keep asking questions, you're like, you remember what I asked five seconds ago. The machine doesn't do that, except this one does. Wow. Heat wave chat, okay, and using natural language search, you're able to maintain the context and keep having this conversation. And this thing is just being really chatty. Yeah. It just wants to talk. Wow. But we're gonna we're gonna have it stop for for a moment yes. and maybe go to a second example. Oh, sh you, I yeah, I, I, more. I was gonna you know you you've done so good at this that I was gonna put you to the test and see if you can show us a second example. You you really have one to show us? Yeah, and and it's a little bit different. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna switch it up. Uh, we're actually gonna create an application using something called Application Express. Uh, we call it Apex. We're on first name basis. I've been using it for a long time. <laughs> Let's go ahead and roll that video, and. And this is so simple. You literally, again, can use the Apex Assistant, okay, and you can use natural language to talk to this thing and have it create an application. Wow. You don't need to be a programmer. Look, it's already fetched these things from the database. It knows what the schema is. You just point it at the right place. And I'm the head of sales. I'm doing a little role play here, okay? A programmer and, and head of sales. Absolutely, <laughs> and grammar too. And, and it's going to decide, okay, I'm going to make the application and here are the components and the screens. I'm going to have meetings, I'm going to have my opportunities, I'm going to have overviews. I can even choose the look and feel that I want. We're going to choose Redwood Light, you know, kind of had a big lunch, you know, yeah, so let's yeah, go yeah. with Light. Yeah, there you so, go. So it's creating uh, an application and then we say run the application. Once we pop out this uh, region on the left, it says, all right, here's my opportunity overview. Wow. I didn't write a single line of code. Wow. This thing created an application just by me talking to it. Wow. And, and not only did it create an application, but it actually has pretty complex logic. You can look at your deals, you can go and filter your opportunities. I want to look at the big ones or the small ones. I want to change to a different visualization because I like par charts better than graphs. <laughs> Who knows, right? And then I want to look at large opportunities because, you know, I'm a salesperson, I'm comped on you know, margin, hopefully margin, hopefully not the amount of sales. Right. That would be wrong. But anyway, once I see the largest opportunity, I want to get together with this rep and I want to say, how can I help you? Yeah. How can I help you help our customers, right? And then let's see if we could create a meeting 
from this opportunity, and then uh, we could have a conversation about you know, uh, uh, how, how we could make this transaction happen. And, and in this particular case, I think just by watching this, Kendall and Fritz, you could go yourselves back to your LinkedIn profile, download Apex and say, we're all programmers now. Wow. Because we could create an application literally without writing a single line of code. I've always wanted to be a programmer and look, I, I, I've I already, can do it. I've already asked Apex to change my LinkedIn profile for me. Whoa. So I don't even have to do it. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, Luke, so tell us a little bit more about how AI and machine learning tech can be useful for various audiences. Can we talk about not only developers, but the business audience, the internal IT team, and also the customers and user, which we're talking about a lot here, and the benefits that come with this. Thank you for that question. User personas are my thing, <laughs> so I'm going to pretend to be a business person. Yes. Let's say that I'm running a hospital or a clinic, mm -hmm. and I want to make sure that the staff, the nurses, the physician assistants, and then the doctors themselves are efficient and can truly affect you know, patient outcomes. And I'm going to use AI to, first of all, summarize uh, you know, what the patient's history is so that the doctor can see it right away. They don't have to hunt and peck around different applications, get lost and frustrated. And then the second thing that I'm going to do is that I'm going to help them with data entry. Because you want your doctor to be looking into your eyes and just focusing on what you're saying, being empathetic, trying to understand what's going on. You don't want them to be a data entry clerk. Yes. That's not what they do best. Right. right. So AI actually helps with that. The second audience, and this one I'm particularly excited about, um, because I used to be a pixel pusher at a little company called uh, Netscape. Yeah. I don't know oh. if anybody remembers Netscape. I you do, remember yeah. browsers, yeah? Yes. Mark Andreessen. Yeah, my boss was actually Ben Horowitz. Okay. So, but good. this was so long ago that it's almost not true, <laughs> right? But I was there, and I was a user experience person. So I really value, uh, you know, the uh, the role of UI in user experience, and we do that at Oracle. Uh, AI can help you with uh, help, like contextual inline help when you're completing a task, and and you can be quicker and you can be, you know, frustrated less often, faster task completion. Everybody's happy. Yeah. Uh, it can also give you a predictive search so that if you're starting to search for something, and by the way, it knows who you are, right? So it'll actually perform the function with the full context of who you are. And then we could also deploy digital assistants. And, and those are really cool uh, because through chat, uh, you're able to interact with them and, and again, get your job done a little bit faster. And then the last uh, user persona or scenario is the uh, developer. Right. And uh, we're not really quite developers just yet. Oh, okay. I'm told that we actually found a real one roaming somewhere on the showroom floor, and he might manifest himself and discuss something about uh, Oracle Code Assist, Java, and maybe cats or not cats. Can we see if we can find him? Sh Shauna, are you, are you out there somewhere? Oh. oh of all the action, and I'm standing right next to George. George, thank you so much for being here with me. Can you share with me a little bit more about how the most popular enterprise programming language takes advantage of AI? Yeah, thanks, Shauna. Um, well, as the stewards of Java, we've been working for a number of years to bring features to the platform that make it so that developers of AI libraries can provide Java APIs. And yeah, this lets you know, Java developers get access to a way to bring AI into their applications um, in a way that is you know, productive, secure, and maintainable. Productive, secure, and maintainable. Three important things. Thank you so much for that insight. And so I hear that you actually have an illustrated experience. We do, actually, let me tell you first about a couple of new things we're adding. So we're actually making it so that new features are coming in that let more AI libraries be written natively in, in Java. And what that means is that they come to a new level of expressiveness, of productivity, and also memory safety. Yeah, but you know, I'm glad you brought that up about the, uh, the experience because there is a great announcement that happened at the show, which is that Oracle Code Assist is going into public beta. Now this is optimized for Java, and I think we might have a video that shows how this makes the developer experience better. 
All right, let's take a look at that. All right, can you leave us with a few uh, best practices and tips for our audience? Absolutely. By the way, I love the Java demo. I'm a dog person, but still. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. best tips. So one is about information security, right? So being able to run uh, uh, you know, in database LLMs really helps. And then for people who really care about security, for example, ministries of defense, we have something called or Oracle National Security Regions where you can essentially run your workloads air-gapped from the internet. And we have roving edge devices, which is a kind of a rubberized suitcase, two form factors, <laughs> and, and you can do it in a field, and you can run AI workloads in the middle of a mission. So information security is something that is really, really important to our customers. So, so one of the tips is to think more about that and then and say, okay, this stuff is good for the machine, like self-patching, self-healing, you know, self-configuring, and then this stuff, the creative stuff, we're gonna to leave to humans. So that's number one. Number two, saving money. Again, think about what workloads you have and what do you wanna run on GPUs and what do you wanna run on, on compute. We're able to offer both to our customers. And then last, let's return to the Formula One metaphor because that's, <laughs> that's my true love. We knew we were gonna come back to it. I know. So, like, let's say you're at Monza. It's a fast track, you have lots of straightaways, you don't want aerodynamics, you don't want spoilers. Right? You want to go fast. Versus Las Vegas or Monaco, tight track, right. you want a lot of downforce, you want the car to stick in the tight turns. Right. The same with Oracle AI. We give our customers choices. You want to do regular, uh, you know, hosted uh, um, AI? Sure. Some customizations, level of complexity increases. Then you want to do retrieval augmented AI, we can do that too. Or Gen AI, or at the other end of the spectrum, if you want to deal with our data science suite and notebooks, it gets even more difficult so, and, and, and more complex and more interesting. So in, in, in summary, you know, what we're able to give our customers is flexibility and choice. AI is in everything, everywhere, all at once, right? I love that. AI is, every, is in everything, everywhere, all at once, and it is already working for you. Luke, this has been excellent. Thank you so much for coming on Oracle TV. Thank you. It was awesome. Cheers. Yeah, yeah it was awesome having you on. This won't be the last time, just so you know. <laughs>